अबे हम ना no we all okay okay uh, i'm trying to right hello everybody this is hi hello everybody this is debbie you know from teacher success coach with another episode of the female educators roundtable but on this episode we have homeschooling home educating and the power of homeschooling the question is is it much more powerful than traditional education that is something for you to ask yourself and for us to hear what our um, guest is saying. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you very much for taking the opportunity to come onto the show and accepting my offer. Thank you well, very thank much you, for your thank time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you. It's okay. Nice Introduce, thank you very much. Introduce yourself, tell us where you come from and... So, hello, um, my name is... My name's Sophia Collins. I'm originally from Nottingham, but now I live in the south of Scotland. Um, I home educate my son, who is nine, nine and a half now, um, and he's never been to school. Um, I, uh, I, for work, I run projects engaging the public with science, which I won't go into because it takes a long explanation, but um, you can Google me if you want to find out more. Um, but I, for many years, I ran a, an education project uh, where we were getting scientists engaging with school students, secondary school students. Um, my parents were both teachers, um, primary school teachers, and my aunties and uncles and um, all my parents' friends were teachers. Um, I'm not, I'm, I'm certainly not kind of anti schools or, or teachers. Well, I mean, I kind of have a problem with schools, but. You know, in my experience, most teachers are absolutely lovely people who care about kids and want the best for them and, and stuff. Not all of them, in my experience as a child, but um, mm -hmm. but generally. Um, but I think that those teachers are kind of working within a very mm -hmm. constrained system that massively encourages them sort of teaching to the test, rushing through things because they've got to cover so much of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And... It's a whole system that sort of is obsessed with like grading children and therefore deliberately failing many of them by design. Mm -hmm. The load of children kind of have to fail exams in order for them to be meaningful. That's how it's set up. And I think that's crazy. Um, mm -hmm. the, 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 sorry, I'm going. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm pushing that's ahead because you had questions, but, but that, that's who I am basically. I'll, I'll stop now and you, you ask what, what your questions are. No, no, no. That's beautiful because. It's interesting, as you were talking, you know, how the whole system is designed, I'm thinking, yes, that's very true. That's very true. Okay, thank you. You said that your child has never gone to school. So the question I'm asking you, seeing that you came from a traditional system mm -hmm. what inspired you or encouraged you to take up homeschooling or home educating your child um good question well i mean there's a lot of reasons but if i'm absolutely honest the sort of the kernel of it you know the the, the starting point of it was that i hated school personally i um I was dyspraxic, which wasn't diagnosed until much later in school. So I was constantly in trouble for kind of having very messy writing and always forgetting things and um, being slow at things and not being very good at kind of following sequential instructions and uh, uh, all sorts of things. I was uh, and, um, and and I would kind of try really hard not to be those things, but I didn't. It wasn't something that I kind of actually could control I much later realized you know and so I just felt always in trouble and and not and, and not supported you know by school but also I was bright so I found a lot of the time that the lessons were because they, they have to sort of teach at a speed that basically they're, they're teaching to the middle ability range of, of the class all the time and and I think often the the brightest kids are sort of getting bored and losing interest and 
the the kids who struggle more with academic work and, and with school are, are kind of lost anyway so there's sort of a, a section of the middle of the class who sort of are following and, and 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 it's going at the right speed for them but there's a lot of people who it's it's not and um uh and yeah I basically I didn't enjoy school at all and I found it uh, I found it a, a very negative experience mainly um and I found as a child there were loads of things that I was interested in and I mean, now as an adult, I, I'm kind of learning things all the time. I get interested in something and I sort of buy books on it and, and read about it and, and get really into a thing, you know. Um, but as a child, you you were so kind of constrained. Everyone got to be learning the same things. You could never sort of follow your own interests or uh, go off and kind of discover the things that made your soul sing, you know. You, you could never sort of go off and... Be, be doing what was kind of interesting to you or, or, or what your mind kind of suited um and and I thought that's not what I want for my child and and like I said I used to run a education project for many years and and I you know I really enjoyed doing that and, and the teachers that I worked with through that were like a lot of them really brilliant people um but they would say over and over again, you know, it was really it was a really constrained system and they were having to rush through things. They couldn't. It was just about kind of shoveling more and more content into kids often. And you weren't able to really be exploring things or really getting them to kind of think things through and develop their own ability to think critically about the, the, the things you were covering. Mm. It was just kind of learning stuff which then they're just supposed to regurgitate in an exam and and often you know forget a few weeks later so this it's like a really pointless process you know it <laughs> um, is it is uh so yeah and I just I saw that and I thought like that's not what like most of the teachers I knew felt that they were working within a system that isn't how they would want the system to be if they could can you know if they had the choice and and I thought that's not what I want for my son. And being as I could see that this uh, this uh, alternative of home education was available, and also I mean as part of the the project that I used to run, it was called I'm a Scientist, get me out of here. Um, as part of I'm a Scientist, I'd I'd had to kind of write and design oh, yeah. classroom materials and and lesson plans and and stuff and. They were really, you know, well received and, and teachers, you know, they got really good ratings and, and teachers were like, this is so brilliant. You know, it's really getting across so much of the curriculum in a much better way than I could have done in normal lessons and stuff. And I was like, I felt because of that background, I thought, well, I feel comfortable with my ability to, to sort of teach my child what might be needed. You know, I, I thought I don't. If it's just me and him, you know, we, we, we can have individual attention. We can, I'm not having to kind of, I'm not saying I would have the skills at all to teach a class of 30, whatever, but mm. if it's just me and I, my, my child and I can follow his interests and stuff, I felt able to, to, to be, to accompany him on a, on a journey of, of learning, you know, um, mm -hmm. but obviously it's also, it's turned out it's been a bit of a, a big journey of learning for me as well, because I sort of pictured it as like, you know, me and my child, like skipping through the meadows, like, and him going, Mommy, how big is space? And me going, Oh, what a brilliant question. But, you know, it's not like that. It's like, <laughs> it turns out my child has his own ideas about things, and um, he's very, he wants to talk about exactly. Pokemon all day long at the moment, for example. Um, and I'm really not that, you know, not that excited about Pokemon, I have to admit. But, um, <laughs> um, but yeah, we've ended up. And I think this is pretty common with home educating families. We started off with a much more kind of structured idea from me about what it would involve. And there's a lot of resistance from my child to the idea of sitting down and doing very structured, formal mm -hmm. learning and, and worksheets. So some kids actually love that kind of thing, but um, uh, we've ended up in a much more unschooling sort of approach, which... Um, challenges me in some ways but <laughs> the more I look into it and the more I, I kind of look at the research and, and and you know listen to education podcasts and stuff that actually a child self-directed learning mm -hmm. I mean mm -hmm. by the time my son was three years old you know he could speak f English fluently now mm -hmm. I've been learning Spanish on Duolingo for three years and I am 
really a long way from fluent. Do you know, like I, I am. I, I, um, so your your child, the child is set up for learning. Their their brains are absolutely set up for for learning, and and they they learn to walk, they learn to talk, they learn to kind of interpret the emotional situations of other people and and also obviously that that they're totally set up that you know they learn to catch balls and throw things and and the the children are set up for learning and we the the education system interferes with it and messes it up and like tries to kind of you know if they started having to kind of have a um GCSE in catching balls then it would now start with a sort of diagram of like the trajectory and stuff but that is not how children learn to throw and catch is it you know it's children naturally do these things and and they learn so much through play and there's all sorts of research on I'm no I'm talking nonsense no no it is it is fantastic it is fantastic because it is a reminder you see and I think that is something that we need to go back to because children learn through play we are mm-hmm. programming absolutely, them. Absolutely, absolutely. But that's not how they learn. Because in Sweden, you know, we know these children continue to play until they're seven years old. Mm-hmm. No formal mm-hmm. education. Because mm-hmm. I had a woman on the, I had an educator on the show that she used to teach in England. And then she moved over. And then she had to, when her child come home, she said, what did you do? The child said she played. And she said she had to on school educate herself to realize that this is how it happened. And she said, her child learned the language, no problem, like you're talking about language. But because she was so programmed in the British education system, she felt that when the child goes to nursery, the child should be used, doing everything constructed. No. Mm-hmm. And that child was learning beautifully to pray. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she had to re-educate mm-hmm. herself. And she said, well, something must be working. So I'm she actually sure, And I'm sure that her child was speaking fluent Swedish much quicker than your adult friend was, you know, because, yes. <laughs> yes. because like yes. children are set up to learn and exactly. that's what they, and exactly. that's what they, they do, you know. Exactly. Um, and we've forgotten, and we've forgotten, forgotten we've forgotten how to learn and we've forgotten how to play, you know, as adults, yeah. really. It is very yeah. true. And, you know, that's something I say to my student. I say, that's the reason why I want you to, when you're actually doing learning and you're doing mind mapping, I want you to lose colors. Because just remember, the children's books are colorful and the, you know, the, the drawings are exaggerated. That's what I want you to start doing when you are learning, when you are actually revising as well. Because that's how you learn as a child. Mm-hmm. Because they could all tell me their favorite storybook that they learned, that they were reading when they were a child. When mm-hmm. I said to them, okay, why do you remember it? It's always the colors and the pictures. Mm-hmm. And they had a play in it or something like this. Mm-hmm. So what is that telling us as adults? Mm-hmm. 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 You know, and I'm glad that your son decided that you had your idea of programming me. No, 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 I'll tell you how I want you to teach me. <laughs> That's what he did. So how is it in terms of, so what were some of the challenges and barriers you've had? <laughs> oh, gosh, uh, all sorts. Well, I mean, it's, um, I mean, I find like these other people, you know, um, I mean, my parents being teachers themselves found it a very difficult decision to understand and mm-hmm. thought we were being nuts and, and sort of thought, well, you know, but it's important for children to go to school and, and that's how, but they've got this idea so that's what learning looks like and that's what how learning happens and that learning doesn't happen any any other way, you know. Um, but I mean, I've actually found, apart from my parents, um, that often, like if you, you get chatting to kind of just people out in the world, you know, people be sort of just, you're in a shop or something and the person behind the counter or something says oh is it a day off school because my son's there and it's a it's a weekday you know and I say oh no we we home educate and people say oh that's and really often people say oh best thing for them or you know they say something really positive about it or they'll tell you some (laughs) horrific story about their own education as as children you know um I mean sometimes people don't say anything positive and I, I think you know they just don't say anything and I think well maybe they've got a negative you know negative thought about it but they're not telling me it you know which is funny mm-hmm. so um but it's uh I mean and now we've got to the point he's nine and a half and his his dad and I aren't, aren't together anymore 
Um, and his dad now is getting to the point of thinking, oh, he should be in school. Like, you know, it was all right when he was young, but now I think he should be in school. And we've we've had some, um, uh, you know, we have, we've had several conversations about it, trying to kind of come to some understanding between ourselves, you know. So that's a challenge because it's you're going against the norm. So if your child was in school, you wouldn't have to have like a big conversation about agreeing to that. Mm -hmm. because it's just the norm and everybody yeah. just thinks that's normal to do you know but mm -hmm. um it's I've not had any difficulty with any you know with officialdom or anything you know uh GPs or anything it's hard one of the difficulties I think is my dream would be to have uh to have the kids have the ability to sort of to have loads of home ed kids all together and have them just have the ability to sort of free play all the time with loads of with a little library and loads of kind of educational resources about and with some adults on hand to sort of answer questions or point them in the direction of things you know um because i think that kids he's reached the age now where you know other kids are who he learns a lot from and, and doing stuff together with other kids mm -hmm. he's developing so many skills all the time but because we live kind of rurally in in Scotland there's not you know there's like one other home ed family in the little town that we live in and there's other home ed people in the county that we live in but you've got to kind of travel so mm -hmm. there's a lot of kind of travel to have meetups I would love it if you know 10 other home ed families all lived on my street, you know, and with the kids could all just kind of, uh, <coughs> yes. yeah, when, when you spread out, I think in a big city, there's a greater concentration and it would be a bit easier um, there. So that, yeah, providing a village for your, for your child, you know, providing <coughs> yeah. a community is, is a bit harder work, I think. Again, so, because it's not the norm, you know, so, um, Exactly. So what are your plans in terms of, you know, he continuing on homeschooling or going into education system? What what does he want? Well, he's pretty determined at the moment that he never wants to go to school, but he would like to go to university, I think. Um, but he's only nine and a half. So um that's all a long way off and I kind of feel like we can review every year you know that sort yeah. of um a year from now or well half a year you know if you if we do it sort of before the school year starts kind of have a conversation yeah. like do you what are you thinking about this do you want to start school you know do you want to start any sort of formal learning what is it you want to do and and to be having conversations about what he wants to do in the future I mean at the moment he, he thinks he wants to be like a, an animator and make videos or you know for YouTube but he's only nine and a half you know so mm -hmm. I feel like his ideas about what he wants to do when he grows up are going to change quite a lot and yeah, yeah you know most yeah. of us had sort of dreams when we were nine and a half of being I don't know ballet dancers or astronauts or or whatever you know um and maybe in your teenage years you start getting mm -hmm. more kind of concrete uh you know yeah. uh, ideas that where then you can be saying well look if you want to be a vet for example then you're going to need these qualifications and how would we what would the route be to getting those and but like i say that's that's a long way off you know mm -hmm. now i think mm -hmm. and we try and i try and sort of follow his interests with things mm -hmm. so at one point he was obsessed with swords so you know i, I bought him books on swords and mm -hmm. we went on a weekend trip to leeds and we went round the royal armories museum which is the largest collection of swords in the uk um mm -hmm. and you know you, you, he's that's super educational that was a super mm -hmm. educational kind of weekend and not something it would be easy to do i mean i was saying weekend we went in the weekday because it's cheaper mm -hmm. to travel and it's easier because it's not busy and yeah. you know you can do that sort of thing when you're home educating but um mm -hmm. uh, am i answering the question but <laughs> yeah 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 that's fine and the other question i was going to ask you do you follow curriculum no 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 the only thing i do is um uh, i've got uh maths no problem which is based on the singapore maths i've got maths oh, yes. no problem workbooks um and that is that is the one bit of formal stuff that that we do is he does like a few pages of that every day and he's working his way through all of them and he's so it's so I know that he's sort of 
he knows and is able to to kind of do the maths that's equivalent to what they would be doing at school for his age group and we do things like um we play uh board games or card games and stuff where you know he's practicing his mental maths so just you know his ability his knowing his number bonds and that kind of thing like he's learned them in those play-based ways mm -hmm. um and uh and we do a lot of uh i mean i'm i'm, I'm obsessed with board games but he's not as good <laughs> as, as, as i am but um like this one board game that he does like to play with when friends come around and and, and stuff where it's called oh gosh what's it called it doesn't matter but basically you're all sort of when it's your turn you've got to kind of you're doing a lot of talking for your turn you've got to kind of convince everyone that your thing is the best and right. so it's like it's not it's not writing but it's practicing language skills mm -hmm. it's really fantastic for kind of orality and and that sort of mm -hmm. um the use of language to sort of persuade and amuse and for lots of different effects and so yeah I try and I try and work those things in mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. you know and kind of challenge him in ways and stuff but also to really pay attention to what he's interested in and, and follow that he's really good at drawing and he's really I mean we've just been on holiday to, to France and then um, again during term time when it's cheaper and you can afford exactly it. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but we, and and the the um we went like your account you know we're staying in a static caravan on this holiday part thing and and then he was he was a bit annoyed because they don't have internet um but I, I was i thought it was quite good for him to have no internet but, <laughs> really, um, but what we did do was we downloaded a lot of audio books and we were listening to audio books we've got a little bluetooth speaker and he's we're, and we're listening to it together so he'd i'd be pottering around and doing the washing up or doing whatever and but we're listening together to these pro, um audio books and and he's just sitting drawing and mm -hmm. like at one point we listened to the original radio series of hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy because i thought oh, he's, he's I, bet, I reckon he's like old enough now to be able to appreciate that and it was a piece of, of popular culture that really had a big effect on me when i was younger and really when i listen to it now you know i can really hear how it sort of influenced my my kind of sense of humor and, and stuff like that but you know it was i shared it with him you know he listened to it and he really he no he liked it he, he was laughing and you know mm -hmm. but then he's he's just doodling little pictures inspired by it and, and we were having <laughs> these conversations afterwards about you know what if mice were the most intelligent creatures in on on the planet and and what it would be, be like to build a, a planet and just really kind of all sorts of interesting yeah, exactly. conversations by that but because we've been listening to it together I'm really aware of what he's been thinking about and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. His, his imagination is really blossoming at the moment he's just at this age where he's getting the books and stuff that he's interested in are really varied and magical you know and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i know it's, it's, it's great to feel so involved in his yeah his education and, and, yeah. yeah 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 that is that is so good because you see in the traditional education you are actually begging parents to come to parents evening to know what the children is doing you know and it's that's one of the sad thing of the traditional education whereas when you're home educating your child you are involved in your child journey mm -hmm. so you are both mm -hmm. learning together and i think that's one of the beautiful things because you could see the ups and downs you can see that aspect of what the child don't understand and you know how to help them navigate to understand whereas in the traditional education a lot of time the children are lost a lot of time they're lost you know and often they're sitting there thinking i've no idea why i'm supposed to be learning this it just seems completely pointless to me you know like okay so i can so some of them will be good at, at sort of memorizing what seems to be a meaningless list of things you know and some of them are better at like learning that and regurgitating it but even the ones who who are good at those things they, they can still be sitting there thinking what is the point of this how does this relate to my life at all you know mm -hmm. they're not not able to sort of actually apply it or, or kind of truly understand what, what what's going on 
with it you know I mean I remember there being things in maths at school that sort of I'd kind of learn a thing and then it wasn't until ages later and I don't know why I couldn't connect it in my mind but something about how it was taught ages later like a year or so later like oh okay right now I get what that was for and I and I mm -hmm. get now kind of what I can do with that piece of information mm -hmm. but up until then I was regurgitating it but I just didn't mm -hmm. get I, I couldn't connect it to anything you know mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to explain it really but um mm -hmm. And I just feel like a lot of what happens in school is, is is like that for kids and kids are just sort of it's just like a rush of things. It's like they're in a train and the countryside is whizzing past the windows and they've mm -hmm. no idea what any of it is. You know, yeah, yeah. it is so true. It's like when Chile said to me, let's say I was covering maths, they're asking me what is how useful is Pythagoras method to their life? Sorry, I don't know. It's not. But you have to, you know, I was just giving this for you guys to do. But miss, it doesn't make sense. What would I be doing with it? And I was covering this class and I said, well, I, I understand what you're talking about, you know. But I'm afraid this is what I've been given for you to cover. And mm -hmm. it is true because a lot of the time how education is taught is like, here you are, regurgitate that, memorize that. And it, this, the children have no connection to what you are teaching them. Mm -hmm. As a result of that, they're gonna feel that, oh, this is no use, as you said, which is interesting, that you were just taught something and you couldn't see the connection because they made no connection for you. They just taught it in isolation. And only years later, they're thinking, oh, right, this is how this connect with this. They don't tell you in school. They mm -hmm. just teach you to regurgitate it and to memorize it. Or maybe to be fair, to, maybe they did tell me at the time, but I just missed it, you know, and I didn't. And when they go in in class like this, 30 kids, whatever, you can't all sort of like ask for clarification on every point or something the way you would if it was just you talking to one person. So often there'll be things where you've just missed some crucial piece of information and, and you, you don't ever kind of join that join that lineup you know and you never revisit it mm, 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 mm. you know so in terms of a typical day what does a typical day looks like for you and your son in terms of home educating well so say on a monday normally we go to uh, some woods near us with some other home educating families so you know we'll we'll get up and i'll make a a packed lunch kind of thing and um uh we get in the car we sort of drive for about 10 minutes and there's some other home educating families there and uh, me and the other parents uh stand around the fire we make a fire and we stand around the fire chatting and talking about our kids and life and you know and the kids kind of run around and make up games and hit things with sticks really <laughs> but I mean sometimes they come up with all sorts of things they sort of yeah. one one week they got kind of interested in slugs and and they were like right now we're going to try and find some slugs and we're going to like make a slug habitat and so from doing that they were kind of working together and doing teamwork and then they but also they were like working out kind of where are slugs likely to be and like you know by looking around and stuff they've worked out what kind of habitat slugs are actually in because like there's some places they found slugs and some places they didn't and so by that they also worked out kind of what sort of things slugs like and, yeah. and so they're kind mm -hmm. of getting like damp things and and shade and and stuff and they're like this is the kind of thing slugs like and look how many different sorts of slugs there are and look how we've made this slug habitat you know oh. um another week they decided to they were, they were started making little fairy houses and out of like twigs and bits of moss and this sort oh. of thing and you know and it's it seems like just a sort of fun aesthetic thing you know and they make it try to make them pretty and stuff but they're also working stuff out about forces and stability and like exactly. they're trying to make them lean against each other and then they're falling down and um but also they're, they're, they're learning to kind of negotiate and work with each mm -hmm. other and and kind of take turns at coming up with ideas and and some of the time they fall out and stuff but then they've got to kind of negotiate that and um so yeah, that's the kind of thing that, and, and then often, so often we'll be there for like hours and sometimes we've been there until it almost gets dark, you know, um, sometimes if it's rainy and, and stuff, it's less time, but then we'll, we'll come home and um, 
at some point he's going to do his he's got to do his maths um we might listen to some podcasts or an audio book while he does some drawing um and i do some stuff um we'll do chores together you know we'll tidy up the sitting room and stuff he's really you know he kind of works out how to tidy and stuff much better than i could at his age and he likes to cook he likes to learn to cook and um Sometimes he, he's, he's gone like, right, no, mum, I'm going to cook something now. And he goes and he finds a, like a YouTube video about something he wants to cook and he, he follows the instructions on that. He made a croque monsieur, like he made a bechamel sauce and everything by following instructions wow. in a YouTube video. Um, wow. That's so, you know, that's so many skills though, because in terms hmm. of, you know, he went, he go into the YouTube video, he learn it and mm -hmm. then he, implement it you know all those things in school he wouldn't have time there's no more of this home you know home and thing in some schools anyway some schools don't do home economics anymore mm -hmm. you know so things like that and then he would learn the ingredients and he take the weight all these are maps you know which is yeah, so fantastic yeah yeah, yeah and it's but it's that he's for me, the, the, the most important thing, this sort of meta learning here is that like yeah. he's learning that like if he's interested in a thing, he can find out stuff about it yeah. himself and he yeah. can he can learn, he can develop skills himself. He's not sort of one of the meta, what do they call it, the shadow curriculum, like one of the sort of meta things that you learn in school is sort of yeah. the, the, the ideas that you have in your head aren't valid that you that it has to come from external to you. Yeah, it's got to yeah. be like, it, what's it? External locus of control, they call it. That that the idea of kind of like what you're supposed to be learning has to come from outside of you and that what you're supposed to be doing in the lesson has to come from outside of you and what you need to know. All of those, these things have to come from outside of you and you've just got to learn to, it's like a kind of learned helplessness that you've got to mm -hmm. learn to just sort of sit there and, and, and if you're kind of being too trying to follow your own thoughts or ideas, whatever, you'll be kind of pushed down and pushed back with, yeah. with that, you know? Um, so you end up learning to just be passive recipients of the, the curriculum as decided by other people, you know? But what he's learning is that his interests and, and the things that he wants to know about and stuff are, are valid and will be supported by the adults in his life. And Exactly. Um, yeah. You know, so thank you. Another thing is, how does he feel? The fact is, he said that he doesn't want to go back to school ever, right? Mm -hmm. So in terms of, does he take, the, because you said earlier on that, you know, you had this idea of, you know, the plan of education. You had this grand education plan for your child, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, now that he would say to you, okay, mom, I want to do some drawing today because you say he's very good at art. So mm -hmm. he's going to, so therefore, is it you would just say it is child directed so he decide what he wants to do yeah 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 very very child led although you know there's often things that i initiate um i mean it was me who started us going to the the woods meetup thing you know but it's mm -hmm. but you know he he likes it so he goes <laughs> he goes along with it and you know it was me who came up with the idea of going to leeds for the weekend um mm -hmm. but it's because i knew that that would be that, that that was something that he'd be interested in and I you know I talk with these things about him no what to, I talk about these things with him you know when I'm making plans and stuff but it's you know a nine-year-old doesn't have the ability that an adult has to mm. think ahead and imagine the future and and, and stuff mm -hmm. you know um mm -hmm. but yeah I, I I feel it's very child-led um mm -hmm. with me sort of uh I guess I'm kind of influencing often by by sort of putting things in his path or things that I think he'll be interested in, but also sort of like, well, look, this is something that I think will be useful to you or whatever. Like, would you be willing to try it? And and I find that the more I back off from trying to push him to do things decided by me all the time, then he's more willing to try things if I sort of ask him to, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because I because I'm not trying to force him all the time to do things. Do mm -hmm. You know, it's a bit like that with sort of with eating. You know, he's still mm -hmm. um, he still kind of likes uh, a lot of beige food. You know, like <laughs> chips mm -hmm. and pizza and, and and stuff like that. But since I and I used to be more sort of like 
look, you've got to, why don't you try this? Why don't you try this? You know, now we found, you know, I mean, I, I do say he's got to eat vegetables and, and fruit, but mm. I, I buy the ones that I know that he likes, you know, but, <laughs> but also because I'm not saying, look, try new things, try new things. I'm backing off on that. Then he started going, you know, oh, well, I will try that, you know, and he sort mm -hmm. of he tries new things quite a bit actually mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. But I think, I don't know if it's just my child, but then my child's the only one um, I have to worry about home educating, isn't he? And mm -hmm. I don't know if all children are like this, but when you try and make him do something, mm -hmm. he'll, just, he'll just push straight back, you know, mm -hmm. on you trying to mm -hmm. do that. Whereas, if you if you sort of respect his autonomy then he's he's more likely to kind of cooperate and mm -hmm. do what do things that you've suggested or try them at least you know mm -hmm. or, and and he, I mean he's really smart children are really smart you know and sometimes we have these conversations where I say would you be willing to try this he says is this one of those questions where I can genuinely say no or is this <laughs> one of these questions where you're gonna like keep on at me until I say yes anyway and so it's like well actually Life is better if I respect your autonomy as a human being because you are yeah. a person, you know. There's yeah. a lot of um, uh, the education system and a lot of adult life actually mm -hmm. fails to treat, fails to recognise that children are people, you know. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. childism, they call it. Like, children are in fact people, you know. Mm -hmm. my, my son says that he's cold and he doesn't want to wear a jacket. And I don't want he can wear a jacket. But some people sort of insist that their child has to wear because I because they think it's cold. It's like, well, if he doesn't feel cold, he doesn't have to wear a jacket just to make mm. me happy and for him to feel uncomfortably hot. He's mm. always cold, he's always hot. In mm. situations where I'm in three jackets, you know, he's in like a t-shirt and complaining mm. that he's hot. There's no he's the best judge of whether he feels hot or not. You know, if we go mm. somewhere and it's cold, I'll take a jacket with me if he's not wearing one, you know. But I feel like he, you know, we, we need to respect our child's right to make their own decisions and to know for themselves, you know, if they're hot or not, or if they're, mm -hmm. you know, if they want mm -hmm. to eat certain things or whatever. Mm -hmm. That is so true, because when you're sick, talking about your child, I was just visualizing my 17 year old, you know, it's like something, it's like when you say, okay, you know, would you like to do that? Oh, what are your thoughts on that? There's a better response than, than you saying, oh, do X, do Y. And I'm listening to you, I'm thinking, mm, it is true. You know? <laughs> it is true. <laughs> so, you know, when you say it, it's so very true because there come a time you have to buy what they eat, what they like. Because when you start buying certain things that you like and you feel they ought to eat it, it doesn't get, you know, received positively. Yeah, so. and you just and you just end up spending so much of your energy, yeah, uh, like battling with them over stupid, you know, trying to get them to eat a carrot or whatever. Yeah. Where it's like, well, okay, but he'll happily eat cucumbers, so I'm just going to buy more cucumbers. You know, like, yeah, I mean, actually, yeah. like carrots, but do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, of, yeah, I see. Yeah, you exactly. can end up sort of really wearing yourself out and stressing yourself out with trying to get them to do something that they don't yeah. want to do just yeah. because you've got it in your head that, yeah. that they should do that thing and you just end up you end up unhappy and stressed and they're unhappy and stressed and your your relation the relationship between the two of you has become very fraught and and doesn't feel supportive to either of you mm -hmm. um what's the purpose of that you know the most crucial thing is your relationship with your child and and mm -hmm. there's a relationship of trust and and support you know mm -hmm. and um mm -hmm. there's no point getting in kind of power battles with a mm -hmm. with a child you know about sort of oh you should listen to me i'm like the grown-up and mm. the, the what was it that the doesn't matter, I think of it <laughs> exactly it, it it doesn't that's the same thing within the education system where teachers are saying you know well you know it's like this whole authority thing and they don't want to back down because they feel that you know that they set a standard and if they back up down they're going to be seen as less than really look I have to judge this situation, right? And if it means that I'm backing down, sorry, I'm backing down because I choose my battle. I'm one of these teachers who choose the battle because I want an easy life sometimes. I don't want to be unnecessarily stressed 
because yeah. it makes no sense sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like these times when like, okay, right, we really do need to leave the house now because we've got a train booked and, and we need to catch that train and it's going to cost us, you know, a load of money to get a different train. And, you know, these times when like we, you do have to, these things you do have to insist on but sometimes you find yourself even still now I find myself doing it sort of getting locked into kind of no you do have to wear those socks or whatever it's like no it doesn't matter why am I doing that you know <laughs> like you you can have your autonomy no one tells me what socks I have to wear or even that I have to wear socks you know like yeah, I, yeah. why yeah. can't I give you the same respect you know it, it, it is so very true it's like listening to that so very true it makes so much sense you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. One more, the, the final question. Mm -hmm. What would three tips be, right? What three tips would you give someone who wants to home educate their child, what harm the anxiety of having to do it, thinking that they're not going to do it right, mm -hmm. thinking that, you know, they have, they have to follow our curriculum. What would mm -hmm. you say to a parent? Okay, well, the first thing I think would be find your local home ed groups. Is there'll be there'll be Facebook groups, you know, for your local area, home ed Facebook groups for your local area, um, and try and get along to like a home ed meetup or or find individual families who are home educating and meet up with them or whatever locally. Because if you're considering it, if your child's still in school but you're considering home ed, or if your child is not school age yet and you're considering it talking to other people who, who are just a little bit ahead of you on the that road you know will that will answer so many of your questions and it will make such a big it makes a difference I think that reading a book or listening to a podcast or something doesn't do you know really meeting real people and and finding out what it's like from the horse's mouth sort of thing and mm -hmm. seeing their kids and, and and stuff I think that's um that's the first step and if you you know, I mean, some people consider home education and, and then decide against it. But mm. I mean, I've met so many people in the home ed community and so many people, I've met so many people who say, I wish we'd taken them out sooner. Mm -hmm. Or I wish I'd taken my child, you know, the, my single child out sooner. I never meet people who say, um, oh, I wish I, they'd stayed in school longer. I wish they'd gone to school more. Never. <laughs> um, <laughs> but... You know, it takes it. It is hard to kind of go against the grain and and do something that's not the normal. You know, so mm -hmm. I understand it's hard to kind of make the decision and stuff. But yeah, go along to home ed meetups and meet people, and really get a sense of what it is and what locally there is, and and you know maybe meet people that you can go get on with and your child can get along with and stuff. Um, and I would kind of well dep depending on what kind of thing you're interested in read books or listen to podcasts or that kind of thing that can kind of reassure you um I mean Naomi Fisher is a clinical psychologist who's released now a couple of books she's based in the UK on sort of unschooling and, and home education and they're very evidence-based and she's very um uh, she writes in a very reassuring way for me, um, I, I find, uh, about how much your children can sort of learn without, you know, you don't have to be sitting, drilling your child and doing a very structured, formal kind of learning thing. Um, uh, and you don't need to be a qualified teacher or anything to do it. But yeah, so her books are very useful. And Peter Gray is a, an academic in America, and he's very interested in, in home education. So if you just search Peter Gray home education or something like that, you'll find a lot of articles from him and they're kind of, he's very interested in how much children like learn from play and stuff. So that will, you would find, I think for a lot of parents that would be very reassuring. And once you start kind of reading that stuff and coming across that stuff, you'll find, you know, you'll, you'll find more stuff. Um, I mean, I'm a very researchy kind of person. I'm, I'm very, I like learning things actually, even though I hated school. Um, so maybe not everybody's as, as kind of wanting to read lots of things as, as I would be, you know. Um, but yeah, I think meeting other people and talking to other people is the thing that's going to, and I mean, you know, watching things like this, you know, just realizing that there are other people out there. You're not the only person. Mm -hmm. There's, mm -hmm. It's not, a, it's not the the majority decision to make. It's not the mainstream thing to do. But 
there are thousands and upon thousands of, of hundreds of thousands probably I'm not sure what the numbers are but there's a lot of people home educating across the UK and um, mm -hmm. there'll be some of them near you probably <laughs> Um, <laughs> and you, you don't have to work it all out for yourself you know there's other people who've, who've trod this path before you and there's yeah there's a bunch of Facebook groups as well that are like there's local ones and but there's also national ones and they'll, there's ones focused on different kind of areas of the curriculum or there's ones about taking exams you know just kind of like how do I get my child through kind of teenage exams and, and stuff and, and the, the structures of sort of how do you actually put them through exams. So this Facebook group's devoted to, Home Ed Facebook group's devoted to all of that stuff, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, okay. Thank you. Another question is which actually popped in my head. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I, although your son have not gone to traditional education, do you think that you homeschooling him, do you feel that he've, he've learned a lot more than had he gone to our traditional education system? It's hard to say, isn't it? It's hard to say. I mean, I think in a way, yes. I think he's, uh, you know, I think he's very kind of articulate and bright and, and he, he gets these sort of interests and picks them up. And I mean, he went through like a, a dinosaur phase and, you know, he'd be watched like like every dinosaur documentary we could get hold of. We'd got like a million dinosaur books. He would like make them, me read them out to him. When he was like three, you know, when he couldn't read really, he'd be reading out these like really kind of way beyond the dinosaur books that were not aimed at children at all. Do you know? And I'm reading out all these Latin names and stuff. And he's, yeah, read it again, Mum, you know. Um, but, but then there's, there's things that I guess kind of like most school children his age would know because it's all they've all covered it at school that he might not know you know but um and he is uh he's less um he's got less experience of sort of putting your hand up sitting in rows but very structured learning oh, God, yeah. in a way you know but I mean we do you know but he goes to like a judo class and a parkour class and and stuff and there's been other ad hoc sort of classes that he's been to. So it's not like he's never got any experience of mm -hmm. being in a, a kind of class environment and other adults teaching him things and, and stuff. But yeah, I would say, I would say he's, I feel as if he's, he's more articulate and kind of learned more random stuff mm -hmm. than he would if he was in, in school. But then I like, I, I imagine I would be doing a lot of that stuff with him out even if he was in school, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I would still be doing stuff with him and, and reading books with him and, and, and stuff, you know, so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, and the other thing to consider, sorry, to go back to the last question, when, no, then, but what, um, a lot of people don't realise, but flexi schooling is an option. And flexi schooling is when your child is um, home educated some days of the week and in school some days of the week. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the legal situation about it in Scotland is different to in England. In Scotland, the school has to, the, the legal guidance says that every case has to be considered individually. So a local authority can't have a blanket policy against it. A school can't have a blanket policy against it. Okay. So if you want to flexi school your child, you can, I think you have to apply to the local authority, but you have to talk to the school as well because they're the ones who are going to have to implement it. Um, but they have to take, consider it and take it seriously. I know that in England, I don't know quite what the legal set setup is, but I know there are a lot of people flexi schooling in England, and it'll be dependent on how open to, to the idea your local school is. But if I know a lot of people kind of start flexi schooling and then go to full home ed, you know, but if if it's something to to try out that halfway house for some people, maybe even just flexi home ed like one day a week kind of thing, um, and see how it it goes for you, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right thanks for that information and you, you know you're so right because it's like different local authority have different policies and mm. it's only you know it's like parents need to also remember that you don't have to follow the national curriculum the national curriculum is, is not legal mm -hmm. you know it's like different schools could teach whatever they want to in terms of the national curriculum. Mm -hmm. you know, and it's only some people realizing that, oh, the national curriculum is not compulsory. No, it's not compulsory, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things 
people need to realize because a lot of parents don't know what their rights are when it comes to the education system because mm -hmm. they don't tell them they want to keep them locked into the system mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know which is which is quite sad mm -hmm. Have you got anything? But I think, else? I think even I think even a lot of the time teachers don't really realise that home education is an option, and a lot of the time that the elective home education officer at a local authority, from from what I kind of read in people's Facebook groups, uh, a lot of the time the elective home education officer doesn't understand the legal standing of home education and will kind of <laughs> insist on a certain load of things that actually are not legal requirements and. Mm parents don't have to follow the curriculum if they don't want to if the home you know the, the home the the, ed, the the responsibility for educating your child like ultimately rests with the parents mm. parents in most cases delegate that authority to the school but ultimately it's 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 supposedly the parents mm -hmm. responsibility to to make sure their child gets an education and and at school or otherwise and mm -hmm. you know otherwise is a perfectly valid choice Mm -hmm. Exactly, I like that. Otherwise, exactly, exactly, exactly. Have you got anything else you want to say before we say goodbye to the people? Uh, oh, just I think when before we came on air, we, you and I were talking, and I re recommended uh, James Mannion's podcast, Rethinking Education, and I would I would like to recommend that to people. If you're if you're sort of like me and you like to kind of nerd out a bit on and, and find out more detail about things, he has like a. Uh, he has a range of like fantastic guests from sort of educational experts to psychologists to all sorts and I find that really reassuring as well about just sort of understanding more about kind of the theory and practice and of education and what research says about kind of how children learn all this kind of thing he's, he's very uh, got a kind of very critical take on mainstream education but I find it really uh, interesting in depth Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you for that. There we go. Well, when actually, um, Rachel, I'm going to ask you to, um, you say it's James what? Mannion, M-A-N-N-I-O-N. Okay, fine, I'll write that in. You should, oh, yeah, you, you, I'm sure you would You would love it. But uh, yeah, I just discovered it a few months ago and listened to nearly all of them now. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. James, okay. if you ever hear this, thank you for your podcast. But, um, okay. but no, I think it's, I think it's really uh, great to get to go to the sort of, what, what yeah. research actually says about how the, the kind of harms of the education system as it stands and, and kind of thinking about how it could be different, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, but any system that wants every child to fit into a box cannot be healthy. Yeah. Because what yeah. you say, yeah. irrespective of your uniqueness, you need to fit into this box. You need to learn things this way. You need to do things this way. So it can be healthy because what you're doing is suffocating the child's creativity. Yeah, yeah. And then if the, every child who doesn't happen to fit that box well is kind of judged a failure and they come out of that system feeling like there's something wrong with them. Well, actually, they're just a different shape, you know, exactly. they've just got different things right. that they're That's good at and interesting. Shape. And, yeah. you know, there's so many people who kind of did badly at school, but and some people did badly at school and kind of come out have a kind of sort some sort of resilience or you know fortunate that their parents have money or are supportive or whatever you know and, and go on to kind of do really amazing things with their lives mm -hmm. um and, and other people you know for whatever reason just end up sort of in a crappy job that they hate or you know mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of miserable you know and and i just think the, the fact that people are good at school doesn't mean anything about like uh, you know how good they're going to be at life or how how much they have to kind of offer the world or mm -hmm. you know often the people who are the most kind of genius are going to be the people who didn't fit in you know very yep. well yep yep so, yep yeah yeah up yep. to the weirdos <laughs> yeah yeah it's like celebrating the uniqueness of individuals that's what that's what you know? and that is so important <laughs> and school exactly. doesn't do do that. Yeah, yeah, School yeah, doesn't yeah. do that. Exactly. exactly. Instead, it's yeah, no. ostracized the individual who have their unique style. And that is quite sad yeah. because the system is saying that you need to be able to memorize the information in order to regurgitate it in the exam, and therefore you get a star. But if you're one mm -hmm. of this individual who critical thinker and reason, 
Mm -hmm. and answer questions from a reasonable perspective with examples, etc. you are seen as there's something wrong with you. No, there's nothing wrong with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just yeah. learn differently and there's nothing wrong with that. It, there's so many issues with the education system. I'm in it, yes, and I appreciate that I'm in it because it makes me, it gives me the opportunity to celebrate the uniqueness of my students. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I go against the grain, you know, it's mm -hmm. not always, you know, I'm not always seen as the best thing because I take too long and I think it's important that I empower my students and celebrate them. Because as you rightly say earlier on, they you know, they all cannot be scientists. We'll also have some of them that are artists. That mm -hmm, doesn't mm -hmm. mean that they're failure. And you no, know, you exactly. said something interesting that you know, if the child don't feed, don't 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 be successful in the exam, therefore the education system deem them a failure. And it's sad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and it's mm -hmm. sad. Yeah, because sometimes being able to regurgitate things well in an exam doesn't actually mean that you necessarily understand them well or are particularly insightful about them. You know, it's just a very, very specific sort of skill, isn't it? Being able to mm -hmm. kind of learn things and, and do well in exams. But anyway, long may you continue to be a, 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 a different voice within the education system for those kids that you do reach. I think it's important that I do that. Yes, thank you very, very much for well, your you very much. contribution. It's been wonderful. Thank, thank you, you very for much. Me. I do appreciate you taking the time off to share with us. Thank you, My Facebook pleasure. people. Tomorrow I have another show, which is the female education. And we'll be looking at the challenges that education educators face after COVID. One of the things is the mobile phones that is giving the American teachers headache because they cannot take the phones away. Whereas in the UK, I could say to my students, hello, if your phone is not away, I'm gonna take it for the rest of the day. <laughs> you know, whereas in America, they cannot do that. Everything is a su su su, you know. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow we have a show where, you know, another teacher will be explaining some of the challenges that they're experiencing going back to the classroom after COVID. Thank you very much guys for listening. Take care, stay blessed. Have a good evening, night, morning, where you are. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.